What's up, what's going on legends? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm bringing you guys the mission guide for tier one of the Black Moss faction. This is unlocked once you complete tier two Legion and tier two White Lotus. And it obviously consists of seven total missions. Out of the first six, you will need to complete five of them in order to unlock the final one. Once you complete that final mission, Black Moss tier two will be unlocked. But before we dive into it, if you guys do enjoy this content anytime or find this video helpful in any way, make sure you show your support for the channel by going down below and smashing that like button. Let's go ahead and throw an easy goal of 100 likes on today's video as well as if you guys like to find your way back to the channel for more Call of Duty content, make sure you just do that subscribe button along with that notification bell so you don't miss you in future videos. First up, we have a vehicular homicide this one is going to be three parts part one is asking us to destroy four armored aq patrol trucks near the oasis west of tarak so there are the little areas of water that is west of tarak this is the area you're going to need to be in and the type of truck that you're looking for are the vehicles that the ai actually drive around the map so it's not one that just spawns naturally it's the ones that the group of ai drive around in and you obviously see the, a few of them in the back of the pickup gonna wait for them to basically get out eliminate all the enemies and you'll have access to one of their trucks you're just going to take this truck to the oasis area and you can actually choose to get as many of these as you would like in a single run you only need four of them so you're more than welcome to grab one take it over there look on the map see if you see another one as they will pop up on the map themselves go ahead and go to that location grab another one drive it over there you can do two at a time one at a time four in the same match if you want as many as you can get your hands on but drive them over to the oasis now my favorite way to go about blowing up the vehicles themselves is to go and get one of those ai that have the rpg eliminate them stow the rpg that way i have it and take it over to the location of where i'm blowing up the vehicles you guys can choose to shoot your weapons at one of the vehicles as long as they're close enough and one blows up they should all blow up or you can use grenades whether it's sem texas frag c4 anything you want to use to blow these up but recommendation is that the launchers are your best bet because it's going to be a lot quicker but once you blow up four of these vehicles in the oasis part one will be complete now part two is along the same lines as part one it's just going to be different part two is asking us to destroy six cargo trucks in saeed now the good news is around the mall there's like two or three of these that spawn pretty much each and every match so if you go ahead and grab a cargo truck and drive it over to that area you're looking for the ones that are like the flatbed trucks and you should already have a few others in the area you should be able to eliminate a good amount of these in a single run without having to go and grab a ton of them and bring them to you you guys can either do two or three of these in a run and do it over the course of a few of them or you guys can try to make the attempt to drive all the vehicles into Saeed and just blowing them up just make sure it says Saeed at the top of the map. It doesn't matter if you're on the outskirts or not. It should count when you blow up the vehicles for Saeed. But once you guys take out six of these, this part will be complete. Now, part three is asking us to destroy four boats in Sawal Village. Again, we're destroying vehicles here. Now, you're going to want to obviously track down any boats that are on the map because more than likely, you'll only have one or two possibly in the area of Sawal Village. But you want to grab those boats, take it over to the Sawal area. As soon as Sawal Village pops up on the map, you are good to destroy that vehicle. Now, a good thing to note here is that the jet skis will count as well even though they are not boats technically they still will count for this challenge as i did test it myself so it's nice because there are a few more of those available on the map grab you a few jet skis grab you a boat but once you guys destroy four boats or jet skis in sawa village this mission will be complete next up we have on rails this one's going to be a two-parter part one is asking us to kill eight enemies while on the cargo train now the cargo train is the exact same train that we had last season so the easy way is is to basically get on the train and just take it around the map eliminating ais as you are able to see them octar village tends to be pretty popular with the AIs that are close enough to eliminate easily. So if you guys jump on the train somewhere near that area and you guys go by, you should be able to get the eight eliminations pretty quickly while you're on that cargo train. Once you guys get these eight eliminations, part one will be complete. Now part two is along the same lines as part one. It's asking us to kill eight enemies while on the passenger train. So this one, you're gonna wanna be on the new train from season two. It's going to be green. It's a passenger car train. You guys won't be able to mistake it. But basically you're gonna jump on this train and you're gonna repeat the process that you did in part one. Now, the cool thing is, is the passenger train actually makes stops. So there is a time period in which it will stop at a certain location, which makes it a lot easier to eliminate the enemies because you're not moving. So when it stops at Octar Village, similar to part one, it's a great opportunity to eliminate the eight enemies that you need. Once you guys have done that, this mission will be complete. Next up, we have Vintage Collection. This one is going to be a two-parter. Part one is asking us to extract two wine bottles. Now, I do want to make note that this can be either aged wine or cheap wine, as they don't actually specify it. But either of these, types of valuable bottles will count. Good places to go for these are the Yum Yum Burgers in Almazra City, which I'll show you a couple of locations on the map for those. And then I also like to go to the hotels that are over by the police station in Almazra as well. There's quite a few locations. Basically, as long as you're looting in refrigerators, you guys will come across these wine bottles pretty consistently. And once you have two of them in your inventory, all you need to do is actually extract with them safely and part one will be complete. Now, part two is asking us to extract one vintage wine bottle. Now, these are going to be the super valuable ones 
ones, the ones that are colored gold or yellow. So these are going to be a lot more rare. But you're going to want to go to basically the exact same locations as you did for part one. It's just going to be a little bit of RNG of when you'll actually find it. So for me, I was able to find one by going to at least two Yum Yum Burgers and the hotel, hitting up all these locations together. And I was able to find one of the vintage bottles. But again, once you guys get your hands on this, you guys are going to want to extract this safely. So maybe if you find this first and you don't have the other two wine bottles, if you're not feeling like you're wanting to risk it, just get the heck out of there because who knows how consistent finding a vintage wine bottle will be. But again, once you guys extract safely, part two will be complete and this mission will be done. Next up, we have Cargo Keeper. This one's going to be a two-parter. Part one is asking us to complete a cargo delivery contract. Now, there's actually two of these different contracts. So if you open up your TAC map and you're looking at the green contract phones, both of the logos for these are actually pretty similar. One has a bag that's kind of floating over a little waves of water, whereas the other one is just a more land style looking emblem. You are going to definitely want to go for the land one. If all you have is C cargos left, you are more than welcome to do this, especially if you have other people. It's not going to be a big deal, but I found it was significantly easier to do the land vehicle. You guys do get access to the LTV, and I found even as a solo while I was driving to the location where the cargo gets picked up, I didn't have too many issues dodging the helicopter and it wasn't blowing me up or I wasn't having too many problems. But with the boat, it's a lot harder to actually get out safely as the chopper usually just beams you out of the driver's seat. So go ahead and take the land vehicle choice and you guys will want to grab that LTV. Once you guys take it to the location where the chopper grabs that delivery, this part will be complete. Part two is asking you to just basically fully repair and refuel the transport vehicle. So you're going to want to be in the same vehicle that you did the contract with or that you got for the contract. Then once you've completed that, it will have been a little bit damaged, I'm assuming, but it'll definitely need some fuel. You'll want to take it over to your nearest gas station. Wait for the meter to completely disappear off your screen, which should obviously cue that the mission will be complete. And then you can move on to your next one. Next up, we have team player. This is actually a repeat mission from last season, and it is only one part. It's asking us to hold up on the D-pad or whatever your bind is for a keyboard to record quest to join two nearby operators. Now, if you're holding up at the D-pad or whatever your binding is, you're going to have a few different options. On the bottom right hand side is going to be one that says request to join. Now, in order for this to actually work properly, the people are going to have to be within 50 meters of you. So if you can hear prox chat, they're actually close enough to you to receive the request. Now, in season one, you could actually get around this because they did not actually have to accept the request in order for it to count. But here in season two, in order for me to actually get it finished, I did have to get accepted into the squad. Now, the good news here is it does say two nearby operators. So if they only solo, it will only count as one player and you'd have to do it twice. But if the group has already got two or more players in it and then you manage to join their squad, you'll get it done in one shot. So as long as there's more than two operators, you guys joined up, you guys will get this part complete and move on to your next mission. Next up, we have speed of sound. This one's only going to be one part and it's asking us to kill 10 enemies in one UAV tower activation. Now, on a previous mission, you guys had to activate UAV towers and ping them on the map. So I'm pretty sure you know what they are by now. You want to go to one that you think might be heavily contested with AI or at least have a lot of AI in the area. I chose one next to Saeed city and I got pretty lucky with it but the good news is is the activation actually lasts a decent amount of time and due to the AI changes at least that we have currently in season two the reinforcements just keep on coming so it's more than likely that you will have more enemies in the area that are pinged than you actually need to eliminate eliminate those 10 ones as quickly as you can before that activation expires and this mission will be complete next up we have our last and final mission which is going to be lab investigation now of course once you've completed five of the previous six missions you will get this one unlocked it is only two parts and part one is asking us to infill into building 21. You're going to be heading over to building 21, which requires you to get a key card. Good way to get a hold of a key card on Almazra is to either go through the supply drops and find one there or even save up a bunch of money because I'm pretty sure you can buy one for like 40 or 50 K at some of the buy stations now as well. So once you get your guys's hands on a building 21 key, make sure you exfil with it. And then you're going to want to infill into building 21 and part one will be complete. Now part two is asking us to investigate the generator room on floor one. So depending on where you actually spawn in in building 21 can kind of depend on how difficult this might actually be. But once you've actually infilled into building 21, you're going to have to wait until the security locks have actually opened in order to actually open the door that you need to go to. You're going to need to go all the way down to the bottom floor, basically where all the parking garages is. If you're in the parking garage, you should be identifying the doors pretty quickly. Now, once you're down in the parking garages and you've identified the A1 location, you're going to want to go through those double doors, take a right. It'll take you around a corner and then you'll have another door that once the security locks are opened, you'll be able to actually unlock and go in. This is kind of like the core room. It has a few enemies in it for sure. But as soon as you actually unlock the door here, part two will be complete and you guys will be finished with tier one of Black Moss. Now that's going to be all of the tier one missions for Black Moss. And now you will have unlocked tier two. Thank you guys for all the support in today's video, all the support in the channel. And I look forward to seeing y'all in the next one. Peace.